Hi everybody, I'm Marco Francesco Funari, I'm PhD in Solid Mechanics. This presentation I'm about new experimental results arising from a research project developed at the University of Dundee in collaboration with Professor Francesco Fabrocino, Dr. Saverio Spadea and Professor Paolo Lonetti. The title of this research is Elastic and the Fracture Properties of PVC Foams. On the screen, you can see the outline of my presentation. At first, I will introduce the sandwich structure concept. Moving on, I will describe the mechanical model, which is based on moving mesh methodology. Then I will talk to you about PVC foam characterization. In particular, I will show you compression and fracture tests. Finally, some results and conclusions. I like to explain the sandwich concept shortly. You can imagine this is a multi-layer bin formed by two layers and is subjected to a three-point bedding test. So in this case, the moment of inertia is approximately equal to 0.66 times b times ts cubed. Now you can imagine that I'm going to put between these two rigid layers very light material, for example some foam, uh, in this case, the moment of inertia is approximately equal to 50 times the previous one. This is amazing because we can improve the loading tailing capacity introducing just a low amount of structural weight. But it should be noted that the sandwich concept is not new. Indeed, we meet sandwich concept in nature. For example, the leaves plant, which are needed to do shadow, or also for the wings beard, which are needed to fly, but also into human bones and so on and so on. Because of their efficiency of this structure, this concept is applied in several engineering applications, ranging from architecture, marine, aircraft, and also to make wind turbine. As a matter of fact, that sandwich panel are used under intensive loading condition, so they can involve in catastrophic failure modes. Typically, in literature, two kinds of failure modes are analyzed: the delamination at the interface between the skin and the core, and the macro crack propagation in the core. The purpose of this investigation are accurately model the fracture modes of failure in sandwich panels and also link advanced numerical methods to effective characterization materials. Okay, let's start about the mechanical model and in particular about the strategy to simulate the skin core delamination. So the structure formulation is based on shear deformable beams and moving mesh interfaces approach. Actually, the hell equasive elements are introduced just in the interface region, leaving the governing equations of the structural model basically unaltered. To concern the description of the macro crack propagation in the core, the approach has combined concepts arising from structural mechanics and moving mesh methodology, which was implemented in a unified framework to predict crack growth on the basis of fracture mechanics variables. Also in this case, the general idea is quite simple. Just we need to introduce two positional variables, x and y. In the box one, I summarize the mesh motion equation to concern the boundary condition. They are a little bit more complicated compared with the previous one. To compute the crack growth, we need of two criterions, of course. The first one to compute delta F, which represents the scalar quantity, which is computed by means a crack criterion. The second one for the angle, which is needed to describe accurately the crack path, the crack king in angle. As the previous one, I could implement each kind of criterions, of course, in both static and dynamic framework. However, these aspects are out of the scope, so let me introduce the experimental campaign performed on the semi-rigid PVC. Okay guys, 
Detect the elastic parameters of this kind of material is extremely challenging. Indeed, in literature, several authors have proposed different setup tests to remove the parasitic effects produced by the compliance differences between the foam and the test machine. The main aim of this experimental campaign was to characterize the elastic properties of PVC foam characterize the constitutive behavior of PVC foam. In particular, we investigated three different kinds of densities, ranging from 100 to 200. Also, we use three ways to detect deformation, the displacement of the test machine, displacement detected by using an external LVT mounted on the plates of the test machine, and finally, the digital image correlation. Okay, in this slide, I'm reporting the experimental setup that we proposed. In this case, the load is detected by using a machine with a load cell of 15 kN. In order to detect the strain occurred in the sample, we adopted three approaches. The first one is a vertical displacement of the machine. The second one is, is by using a LVDT and the third one by measuring the strain fields optically just by adopting the digital image correlation. In this picture, I am reporting the load curves arising from displacement machine and from the LVDT. As you can see, the compliance phenomena brings a different results in terms of elastic modulus. This is because a macroscopic characterization of cellular forms is affected by local collapse of closed cell under compression. In this picture, I'm reporting a sample before and after the test, and as you can see, the collapse of the, the cells are concentrated in the, in the medium region of the sample. For these reasons, we use digital image correlation for the elastic characterization. In this slide, I am reporting the strain maps recorded at different load levels and for both directions in plane as well as through the thickness. This methodology was adopted for DIAB H100, DIAB H113, and DIAB H200. The previous results I used to identify the elastic properties of PVC foams. In this slide, they have summarized the elastic properties of the three kind of density topology investigated for the fluid thickness direction. It is clear that the elastic properties improve for dense foams. The same considerations can be done for the implant direction. The results show also how the material presents basically a transversally isotropic behavior. Now let me talk about uh, fracture test. As a matter of fact that to detect the macro crack propagation in the core region, I need to know the fracture toughness of this material. Thus, the fracture toughness is evaluated by using a three-point bending test on a semicircular bending specimen. This setup allows us to simulate all range of mixed modes, ranging from pure mode 1 to pure mode 2, as you can see just by changing the position of the second support. Here in this slide, I'm reporting the fracture toughness for both mode 1 and mode 2 that increase for denser forms. Everything that I said have been implemented in a mechanical model based on moving mesh methodology, where the real mechanical properties of the foam were introduced. For this case, just the macro crack propagation in the core happened, but thanks to the capabilities of this numerical model, the traction forces at in the phase region between the, the core and the skins are monitored. Now just some conclusions, an experimental procedure aimed at linking advanced numerical methods to effective characterization of core materials like PVC. 
POC forms tend to produce localized deformation due to local collapse of cells under compression. This phenomenon produces an erroneous estimation of elastic properties, which is overcome by using the digital image correlation. Instead, the fracture tests have been conducted on asymmetric semicircular samples, which are able to generate all range of mixed fracture modes in fragile materials. The fracture toughness of VOC foam materials strongly increase together with their density. The numerical model developed in the previous author works is able to describe crack propagation phenomena also in the core region. Thank you very much for your kind attention.